there's a whisper on the wind. Monaro, there's a thunder down the street. Monaro, there's a full loaded door. There are four on the floor, and life is suddenly very Monaro. It's very Monaro this year. Monaro by Holden. Australia's first sports machine. The racy looks of a high-priced Continental rally car, but no fancy foreign price tag. Three models. Monaro. Monaro GTS or GTS 327. Out to drive you wild. Wide road-hugging track. Super-tuned suspension. Engines right up to a 250-horsepower V8. Console, floor shift, manual or automatic tachometer and safety features all around you. Monaro is going this year. Make him show you. Uh, hello there, it's Liam from Unique Cars and Parts and I'm with Noel and he's 327 GTS HK Monaro and what a beast it is, the colour is awesome and I looked at it and I thought, well my god, this thing looks like it's just rolled off the production line. Original colour. Um, it's bright, that colour, the name is bright blue, um, f fairly popular colour back in the day. Uh, and <clears throat> the interior is, again, is not a mark on it, but that's because this was restored about a year ago. Yes, just uh, it's registered about six months ago, so. How long, how long have you owned it for, Noel? I owned it for 25 years. And what prompted a restoration? Was just starting to get a little bit tired and you wanted to lift it up to what would be, you know, show winning um, I, I guess condition. Well, the car was was wasn't drivable the way it was when I bought it. It was uh, the engine was uh, uh, broken and it needed a little work. Um, so I just sat it in the in the garage at home for the last 24 years. So this has been an ongoing project. You go out there, sit in the garage, look at look at the car, have a beer, and say one day. And that one day came last year. Pretty much. Yeah, I've had lots of other cars. I I that that I still own, I've got street rods and things like that, but I, um, I bought my first Monaro in 1972 when I was 18. Uh, was that, well, that would have been a HQ or you bought a second hand? It was a second hand ha yellow HK. <laughs> like, 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 like Keith's next door. Little, yeah, very similar to that. And uh, I've had several Monaros over the years and then uh, I, I just saw, I saw this one come up and I thought, yeah, I'll grab that and put it in the shed and I'll do it one day. And one day took, I, I know, I sort of semi-retired. I, I own a mechanical business, but I don't do that much in it anymore. So um, I had the time, and I decided it was time to uh, get stuck into this one and get it done. So we it's completely stripped on a rotisserie, and um, much like much like Keith, he stripped his down and put that on a rotisserie too. Yeah, it's been on a rotisserie. Every, everything's been done to it. It's a, it's a matching number car, the original engine, um, original gearbox. It, 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 look, the condition inside, uh, even even the, down to the steering wheel, how did you get that restored to such good condition? Steering wheel uh, is an original steering wheel, not the one off this car, but one I've actually had for probably 40 years, so I've had it for a long time, since it was, you know, like, um, I, it, one of the other Monaros I had uh, got damaged and I, and I kept the steering wheel and a few bits and pieces like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the steering wheel. The uh, interior is called light teal. It's an unusual interior. The very early Monaros had that. After that, they had a colour called Jacana, the, the blue. So it's unusual to see that light blue in them. But it's, it looks a little different than the black, and I think it looks quite good. But that, that's its original coloured interior, so that we couldn't vary from that. And the, and the original radio and the HK Monaros were the ones that came out with the taco on the, on, on the console, yeah. which I think always looks a little bit smarter than the, in the dash. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it looks good. Not very practical, but looks good. Well, it sort of looks like a bit of a tack on, but a, a tack on taco, but it does look really, really like it's a performance car, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does look good. Um, we, we've... Um, made some modifications to the vehicle it's got it's got different wheels and um, we narrowed a rear end not its original rear end I didn't want to narrow that but we narrowed a, a, a rear end I got out of a Brahm same type of rear end um, I liked them and, and that's how we liked them when I was 
at 18, so I sort of, I, I guess we grew up with that. We never left the original wheels on, the hubcaps on them. We, we uh, had them sitting lower with big wheels and extractors, and that's what this one's got. So I've just, just sort of gone back to what I like. So, Noel, we, wheels aside and a slightly narrower axle on the back, any other modifications? No, absolutely original, the whole she, part. She is stock. Matching, matching numbered original, yep. I can, I can see in the dash, there's a, next to the wiper, you've got a, a, what looks like a blank cutout. What, was, what switch would normally go there? That would be a choke, which the six cylinders had a choke in there, um, but the uh, 327s had a, an automatic choke. And, and I'm, I'm glad you left the, the knockout plate in there, like, like it would be. It give, give, adds that authenticity to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, look, you look inside and, and you look like, you know, I'm, a, I'm in a General Motors showroom. Yeah. Back in 1967, this car... 68, yeah. It was one. It's a very early car. It was made in the first month of, of production. It was made in uh, in the first week in August in 68. One of the first to come off the production line. It's the 180th Monaro made in Sydney. So I got out of all Monaros. Not the 180th 327, but the 180th Monaro. Monaro. So very early car. And there wouldn't. Uh, so there would be even a lower number for a 327. Yes, I'm not too sure how many 327s. In Series 1, 327s, I think there was only about 500 made. And then the Series 2, there was probably another five or 600 made. So there, there, there weren't a lot of them anyway, like really. I mean, a, a thousand, I think, overall. So so 27 years in the in the garage waiting to be restored. Now it's restored. I don't. It, this hasn't seen rain at all, has it? Uh, <laughs> yes, it has. It's, it ha it, well. It's about 4,000 miles. Um, yeah, and it has seen rain. <laughs> And, well, 4,000 miles, so you're just breaking the engine in then? Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And, we, and, and, and it had a few bugs, which we've ironed out now. The car seems to be pretty right now. So speaking to Keith before, he said that the parts on these things are pretty easy to get. The, the parts for the 327 engine are plentiful because they're an American-built motor. Yeah. Um, even the gearbox is getting a little bit harder to get. Have you, in the restoration process of this, did you find any, was there any stumbling blocks that you had? There are a lot of little parts that are hard to find, that especially if you've got to have the right part and you, you, you I mean, everything's got a date code on it, So, which I found out, which I wasn't aware of when I first started the restoration. Um, they, 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 so every part's got a date on it. Mm, that, so, ma that makes so, it tough. So, so you so, can't just go and put a reconditioned steering box in it. You've got to recondition your own steering box or you can't put a reconditioned um, brake master cylinder in it. You've got to re recondition your own. Even the alternator, everything's got to have the right date code. Even the glass got a date code on it. So you mentioned this is a matching numbers car and I didn't realise it went to... It, matching numbers down to every single part on the bloody thing. I Look, I, I would call a matching numbers car as long as it's got the right motor in it but having said that this one is all the other numbers match as well we went to a lot of trouble to make sure it did that you know so Gee, that, that, so <laughs> that would make it very unique and rare i should imagine yeah it does you have to you have to you can't just go and buy a, a nice dash because you see one advertised you have to restore your own dash because it's the one with the right numbers on it and all that sort of thing so so it's and i, and I guess that's why when people restore cars they say hey, that's older cars it's really important to have a fairly complete car to start with so you can do that uh-huh and so what liberties can you take if you restore well did, were there any that you took or was every single part you had had to be restored pretty well everything had to be restored I'd, I'd say we've done it all properly but there'll be some experts here that know more than I um, that'll tell me that this is wrong and that's wrong or it's got the wrong coloured bolt here and or the wrong coloured bolt there if, if you look under the bonnet you, the, all the bolts that hold the guards down have a uh, they're, they're uh, like a silver silver headed bolt with a copper coloured washer and a, and a, a copper coloured spring washer and a gold coloured ordinary washer so that's how that's what you have to do to take it to that level. When and, and, the, the, and that colour combination on those bolts is accurate? It's accurate, yeah. That's exactly how they were, yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's, why we've had to, that's why we've gone to that trouble. Yeah, um, yeah to well, make it accurate. And, and the original wheels, I've restored the wheels and all that sort of thing. So I, have, I do have all the original stuff and the original diff. I just choose to draw, have it like this because that's how I like it. But so you had the bright work restored. The badges, now I'm guessing they're a rare spares? No, they're not. No, they're original. We, we went to, <laughs> once again, same thing. Went to, went, could have bought them, but went to a lot of trouble to tidy the original ones up and re them and put them on there. You, all, you, all, you, every you, badge on the car is original. Those, the the arch mold, guard arch molds are all original. All you, the badges on this are original. When you said you went to that, I just, I can't. That looks brand new. I, that You've restored the badges on it. 
Well, you can spend, you know, to get one badge right before you chrome it, you can spend hours and hours, and then you've got to hope the chromer doesn't mess it up sort of thing. Um, and, and, and who puts the paint inside it? Um, I didn't do that. I had someone do that, someone that could do that sort of thing. But, yeah, paint it inside it, yeah. Bloody hell, it's, it's a project in itself, just getting one badge done. It is, yeah. yeah. It's, look, to, to restore up a high-end car really is, uh, uh, I mean, a lot more work involved than what I realised when I started. I mean, like I say, I've got lots of other cars which are modified street rods and things like that, and, and they're easy compared to one of these, because if one thing doesn't fit, you just buy another, you know, I mean, it's not hard, but, but, but this but has it, been a real... Dip. But but having said that, I've loved it. I've enjoyed doing it. No no regrets. No no regrets. Well, uh, looking at it, the, you wouldn't have any regrets. My goodness me, it looks great. The the stripe. I notice it doesn't go across the roof. No. It just does the bonnet and yeah, the boot. They never went across the roof. No, they were always just, just did the bonnet and the boot. That's how they are. And yeah, and and they have an edge like all the later model ones that you you would see, and they'd be underneath the clear, but they have an edge like that one's left with the same edge and its original setup. Um, and and, but, and you, you've got the standard wheel in the in the boot, and, yeah, and I'm guessing that's because one of these modified wheels wouldn't fit in the in the wheel well. Well, it wouldn't fit in the wheel well anyway, and, and that's why this wheel lays over the the earl, some of the others like they they only had a, like they have a five inch spare and it, and it fits up taller. The, the six inch one had a layer across like that, and it has a huge fuel tank, which you'll see when if you look in another Monaro, they don't have a fuel tank anywhere near that size. I remember when I was young, I couldn't afford to fill it up. Yeah. <laughs> Even then, we could, we could, you, yeah. you couldn't afford to fill it up, but you have, you can afford to buy it, but not fill it up. Yeah, it's a 130 litre tank. So. Look, I, I remember when I had my first car, running out of petrol just seemed a rite of passage. I used to run out all the time because, you know, you'd think it'd get you to the end of the week, but it wouldn't. It'd let yeah. you down on Thursday. Yeah. Um, so, uh, at Noel, thank you for showing me around your car. Uh, it is uh, HK, one of my favourites. HQ yep. is my penultimate if I was to be lucky enough to have a Holden but when I see something like this I think I could change my mind and I owned a HT GTS Monaro but it had the 186S engine so uh, I guess that was the the poverty pack I was driving oh no not really if it was GTS they're great there's nothing wrong with the six-cylinder ones either particularly now you know, I mean you're better off leaving them as a six-cylinder than what you are trying to put a V8 in them which a lot of a lot of them have been done over the years now they're all trying to find their six-cylinders because they're very very valuable car when they're restored back with this six cylinder in them so yeah so this would be well over a couple hundred grand we're looking at here uh what would it, just just to pique my interest uh, a 186s ht monaro any idea what that sort of money would fetch these days oh in reasonable nick 150 or 60 i'd say uh, uh, 150 to 160,000. this this one's worth about uh, it's insured for two hundred and fifty thousand, but I think it's probably more three hundred and fifty. I, I wouldn't sell it. Well, so I wouldn't sell it for any money, but but I reckon that, that's about its value, about three hundred and fifty. I I sold my Monaro and got a Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, I did things like that too. <laughs> I feel like a complete and utter idiot, Noel. A complete and utter idiot. I feel like that. Most days of the week, I'm even bigger today. Well, Noel, thank you for showing me around your car. Good on you, mate. It's, it's, it is it is fantastic. I'll take some photos, and uh, we look forward to you uh, tuning into more videos from Unique Cars and Parts. And please, subscribe. You'll subscribe, won't you, Noel? I definitely will. Thank you, mate. Good on you. Bye-bye. This is where it's happening, right here in your world. Things aren't like they used to be. Times have changed. People aren't afraid to express themselves anymore. Today's people are dynamic. They live at a faster pace. Individuality is a living thing. Today's world belongs to today's people. It's a winner's world. Yes, this is where it's happening, right here. This is where it's happening.
And this is where it's happening. It's happening everywhere. Happening with all the people who are just a little bit more forward-looking. A little bit more young in heart. To them, life's exciting. An adventure. And that's the way they want their driving. To them, a car is more than just transportation. It's something very personal. An extension of themselves. Sporty. Modern as tomorrow. Sophisticated. They want a car that looks like a performance machine. Handles like a performance machine. Goes like a performance machine. Yes, there are thousands of these sort of people everywhere. So what's holding them back? How come there are 50 of these for every one of these you see? Well, you know what the answer is at present. People have the desire, all right, and they've got the money. But not many of them have got it at $8,000 a throw. And besides, who wants the costly disadvantages of constant maintenance and special engine tune-ups? And who needs this kind of comfort? No, what these people want, in fact, what this country needs right now, is a car that combines real round-town practicality, the comfort and convenience people are used to, and a sensible moderate price tag. But the lines and the handling and the performance of a true sports machine, and they haven't been able to get it. But now, 